Thank you for joining us at Christ Cathedral Church. Our live stream will begin in just a few moments. Our weekly services are held Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study with Bishop Allen starts at 7.30 p.m. each Wednesday, streamed exclusively on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for replays of past services and to stay up to date with current events happening at Christ Cathedral Church. Family Sunday School is held weekly at 9 a.m. each Sunday in room 208 of the Administration Building, upstairs from the Christ Cathedral Church Cafe. Bring your family as we gather to learn from the Word of God. Join Christ Cathedral Church for our annual January Consecration, featuring 21 days of fasting and praying, January 2nd through the 30th. For the complete schedule of this three-week fast, please visit us on our Christ Cathedral Church Facebook page. Save the date for Prophetic Summit 2024 and the PMCA Grace Convocation, February 4th through the 9th at the Christ Cathedral Church Sanctuary. Stay up to date on the full schedule and guest speaker announcements by following us on our Christ Cathedral Church Facebook page. If you would like to submit a prayer request, please email us at prayerrequest at christcathedralchurch.net. To stay up to date with events happening with the church, text the word LOOP to 817-442-2748. You will receive occasional text messages letting you know of everything going on here at Christ Cathedral Church. Join the intercessors every morning at 6 a.m. for intercessory prayer. To join the conference call, simply dial the number that corresponds with your service plan and enter the access code followed by the pound sign. Morning prayer begins promptly at 6 a.m. seven days a week. Be sure to share this live stream with your friends and family as we continue to spread the gospel around the world. So you're seated today electronically through any one of our convenient online methods. Thank you for joining us at Christ Cathedral Church. Our live stream will begin in just a few moments. Our weekly services are held Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study with Bishop Allen starts at 7.30 p.m. each Wednesday, streamed exclusively on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for replays of past services and to stay up to date with current events happening at Christ Cathedral Church. Family Sunday School is held weekly at 9 a.m. each Sunday in room 208 of the Administration Building, upstairs from the Christ Cathedral Church Cafe. Bring your family as we gather to learn from the Word of God. Join Christ Cathedral Church for our annual January Consecration featuring 21 days of fasting and praying, January 2nd through the 30th. For the complete schedule of this three-week fast, please visit us on our Christ Cathedral Church Facebook page. Save the date for Prophetic Summit 2024 and the PMCA Grace Convocation, February 4th through the 9th at the Christ Cathedral Church Sanctuary. Stay up to date on the full schedule and guest speaker announcements by following us on our Christ Cathedral Church Facebook page. If you would like to submit a prayer request, please email us at prayerrequest at christcathedralchurch.net. To stay up to date with events happening with the church, text the word LOOP to 817-442-2748. You will receive occasional text messages letting you know of everything going on here at Christ Cathedral Church. Join the intercessors every morning at 6 a.m. for intercessory prayer. To join the conference call, simply dial the number that corresponds with your service plan and enter the access code followed by the pound sign. Morning prayer begins promptly at 6 a.m. seven days a week. Be sure to share this live stream with your friends and family as we continue to spread the gospel around the world. So you're seen today electronically through any one of our convenient online methods. Thank you for joining us at Christ Cathedral Church. Our live stream will begin in just a few moments. Our weekly services are held Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study with Bishop Allen starts at 7.30 p.m. each Wednesday, streamed exclusively on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for replays of past services and to stay up to date.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, put those hands together one more time and receive the reader of the spoken word of God, the written word of God, Elder Knight. Come on, clap your hands for her as she comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read to you Philippians 4, chapter, the 4th through the 8th verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto, the, unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, open up your mouth and praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I dare you to open up your mouth. Up a sound of freedom in this room. Come on, can you open up your mouth and lift up a sound of freedom in this room? Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop your praise. Don't stop your worship. Come on, come on, come on. Did anybody come to see the King of Kings tonight? Did anybody come to see the Lord of Lords tonight? Father, we came for you and you alone. Father, we came for you and you alone. We thank you for your freedom that is in this room. Hallelujah. Welcome to Christ Cathedral Church. This is Prophetic Summit 2024. Somebody make some noise. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Do me a favor and put your hands together all over this room. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, come on, come on. I see you clapping, but let me see the freedom in this room. Let me see you smiling.
Free. 
If you want it, if you want it, it's, it's your inheritance. Want it if you want it. Sing if you want it. If you want it, if you want it, it's yours. Sing if you want it, if you want it, if you want it, it's yours. If you want it, if you want it, it's yours. It's your promise from the king. It's your promise from the king of kings. That freedom you've been looking for. Sing if you want it. Sing if you want it. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. It's yours. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. It's yours. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. It's yours. If you want it. If you want it. It's yours. That freedom belongs to you. If you want it. It's yours. That freedom. If you want it, if you want it, if you want it, it's yours. All the freedom of the Lord is here. It's yours if you want it. All the freedom of the Lord is here. It's yours if you want it. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. We are free. Yeah. We shook it off. Oh, 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 no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. yeah. Come on, somebody, open up your mouth. Come on, somebody, release the sound of freedom in this room. Come on, come on, the Savior came so that you might have life. Come on, I dare you to open up your mouth. Open up your mouth in this room. The freedom is yours, it's yours. The freedom is yours, it's yours. It's yours if you want it. It's yours if you want it. It's yours if you want it. It's yours if you want it, if you want it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Do I have any free worshipers, free praises in the building tonight? Can you do me a favor and lift your hands all over this room? Come on and release a sound of freedom. Come on, do I have anybody that's grateful for the freedom that belongs to you? Come on, he came for you and you alone. He came for you and you alone. I dare you to open up your mouth and show your gratitude in this place. Come on, come on, come on. Don't let the band do it for you. Don't let the praise team do it for you. I do it all by myself, although I will. I dare you to open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and worship him. Open up your mouth and praise him. Come on, come on, let me hear the freedom in this room. Let me hear the freedom in this room. Come on, let me hear the sound of freedom. Come on, heaven wants to hear from you tonight. Father, we're so grateful. Father, we're so appreciative. Thank you for the freedom that belongs to us. It wouldn't be possible without you. So we came to give you the praise that you do. We came to worship you tonight. Come on, somebody, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Come on, somebody, feel this room. Somebody, feel this room. I want to hear the sound of freedom. Feel this room. Feel this room. Wants to hear you, he does. Came to set the captives free. No longer bound, I am free. He came to set the captives free. No longer bound. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. I'm no longer the same. Yeah, yeah. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. I'm no longer the same. Let me hear the sound of freedom. Let me hear the sound of freedom. Everybody say. Sing came to Count the free No longer bound I am He came to Set the captives free No longer bound Sing came to No longer bound. I 
the chains He broke the chains I'm no longer the same Yes, He did He broke the chains He broke the chains I'm no longer the same One more time, say He broke the chains He broke the chains Yes, He did He broke the chains I'm no longer I'm no longer the same 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 Come on somebody rejoice in this room Come on, somebody put your hands together and rejoice in this room. Yeah. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. I'm no longer the same. Everybody shout in this room. Say, he broke the chains. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. I'm no longer. I'm no longer the same. I'm no longer. I'm no longer the same. 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 Because he broke, he broke the chain. Because he broke, he broke the chain. I'm no longer. Open up your mouth and rejoice in this place. Yeah. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Oh, yes, he will. Yeah. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah.
clap your hands for the Lord one more time one more time hallelujah will you remain standing all over the building and receive our visionary our leader the doctor Sherman C.G. Allen will you clap your hands as he comes come on y'all can do better than that come on clap those hands act like I'm calling your name come on Now, can you clap your hands and bless God for Jesus? Oh, come on about. Take about 30 seconds and bless him for what he's already done. I said, praise him for what he's already done. I said, give him glory for what he's already done. I said, magnify him for what he's already done. I grew up in the old church where every time we'd come together, we had what they call testimony service. Anybody remember testimony service? First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And when they got through giving honor to everybody, uh, they would begin to talk about what God had done. We don't have time for you to tell it all, but I dare you just to look at one or two people on your left, on your right, in front of you, behind you, and just tell them one or two things that the Lord has done for you just lately. I said just tell them one or two things that the Lord has done for you just in the last few days, just in the last few hours. Just tell them one or two things that the Lord has done for you. Just tell them one or two things that he brought you through. Just tell them one or two things that he brought you out of. Just tell them about that not my side. Just tell them about how he healed your body. Just tell them about how he made ways for you. Just tell them, I na 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 no hope I shot. Just tell them, come on, come on, come on. I dare you to tell somebody how good God has been. Tell them if it had not been. Give me a little more on the stage. Tell them if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Where would I be? I wish I had somebody. It called the Abahasha. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus 
and all that poor Khadib Asha. Y'all ain't gonna talk. Come on, tell somebody. You ain't gotta tell them all your business, but just tell them one or two things. He made a way for me. Brought me out. Get my heart shut up. I dare you to praise the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Clap your hands and give him glory. Open your mouth and give him praise. Oh, he's been better to you than you praising him. I said he's been better to you. You can be seated if you can, but on your way down to your seat, just tell one or two people the Lord has been real good to me. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody else the Lord has been real good to me. This time last week, we were in the hospital. The first lady and co-pastor was in ICU. There from last Thursday until this past Thursday. But this morning when I got ready to go to church, she was up getting dressed. I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to church. Oh, I wish I had somebody. She told her about Kosia. She said, if God gave me strength, I wish I had two or three of you. Just tell somebody, if I can't thank him for nothing else, I thank him for being here. I'd rather be here than the best hospital in Fort Worth. I'd rather be here than the best nursing home. I'd rather be here than the finest jail. I'd rather be here. Oh, Look at him and say, The Lord has been real good to me. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. I gotta move. Oh. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Will you thank God for co the First Lady? Thank God for her life. I said, thank God for her life. Is there anybody else in here that can testify the devil tried to kill you, but you're still here? I, I said, is, uh -huh. is there anybody else in here that can testify the devil tried to kill me, but I'm still here? He tried to make me lose my mind. He tried to make me lose my life. He tried to tell him, of course he had. He tried to make me lose my faith, but I'm... Oh, you ought to clap your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands and praise him. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Woo, uh, yeah. Well, if you go praise him, go on and praise him. Take, take one minute and go on and praise him. If you can't praise him for yourself, praise him for somebody else. Oh, yeah.
Tell somebody he's been real good. Hey, how ya? Real good. Been real good. God bless you. Be seated. Grab somebody by the hand. Tell them you act like God's been good to you. Oh, yeah. Oh. That is. Listen, when bishops and apostles and prophets and pastors and all of y'all with all them real big titles, if you can pray, your people will pray. But they need to see you pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I gotta move. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands and pray. Yeah, yeah. I feel God in here. Yes, sir. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Clap your hands and pray. Woo. Praise him with your hands. Praise him with your hands. Your hands, 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 hands. hands. Bring them with your hands. Bring them with your hands. Bring them with your hands. Hands, hands, hands. Bring them with your feet. Bring them with your feet. Bring them with your feet. Feet, feet, feet. Bring them with your feet. Bring them with your feet. Bring them with your feet. Feet, feet, feet. Bring them with your mouth. Bring them with your mouth. Bring them with your mouth. Now, now, now. Hands, feet, mouth. Hands, feet, mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. God bless you. Oh, you are in the prayer. You are in the prayer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Grab somebody by the hand and pull them down. Grab somebody by the hand and pull them down. Tell them he ain't been that good to you. You act like God's been good to you. Didn't he make a way for you? Didn't he take care of you? Didn't he bring you through? Oh, yeah. God bless you. Praise him, Pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. To all of the fivefold ministry gifts, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, come on, clap your hands for those people around you who sit and help watch for your souls. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm thankful we are for. So many Diaman Shaya. So many of you who've made your way to the house of God tonight on a Sunday night. I know the devil say folk don't go to church on Sunday night. But look at somebody say, I'm here. That's shy. Whew. I bless God for all of you, the people that you all shy people of the Lord who have made your way. Uh, let me uh, certainly appreciate and I appreciate all of the pastors and leaders and all of you, the Lord's people who are here. Uh, but I want to pay uh, proper deference and respect and honor God for um, uh, one of our sons and daughters who have, I'm sure, come the furthest distance from uh, further than any of us, he and his precious wife have come from uh, South Africa. They are uh, our bishop and first lady there. Stand, Bishop Shazze, Lady Shazze. Come on, thank God for them. Clap your hands and bless God. Hallelujah. He is uh, uh, my son and we... Uh, esteem him highly and thank God for him. This is her first time here and we certainly want to welcome them and make them feel welcome in Texas. Is that all right? Amen. Just greet the people that are around you and tell them I'm so glad you're here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you don't know the person that's uh, sitting beside you, introduce yourself to them. Tell him I'm going to be your praise partner tonight. Come on, tell somebody I'm going to be your praise partner tonight. Tell him when I say amen, you say amen. Tell him when I shout, you shout. Tell him when I give God glory, you give him glory. Tell him we're going to take turns. One of us is going to be a praiser and the other is going to be a fighter. If you heard the message this morning, I said tell somebody we're going to take turns. One of us is going to be Judah, and the other is going to be Simeon. You do know the name Judah means let God be praised. But the name Simeon means God has heard. I wish I had somebody. Which means every time you praise him, he responds to your prayer. I dare you to clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Nehoshia. We're getting ready for the word of God. I am so excited tonight for this second service of what I know will be a week that will be power packed. Amen. And prophetically charged. I believe that God is going to speak. Uh, this morning, the woman of God ministered and uh, prayed for people that uh, she walked up to him and started talking about cancer and didn't know they had just been diagnosed with cancer. Hallelujah. Talked to somebody else about tumors being dissolved and didn't know that for the last two or three years they've been dealing with this issue of tumors. But look at somebody and say, God has you in mind. And tell somebody, tell them like this, tell them he'll never reveal what he's not ready to heal. I dare you to touch somebody and say, if he speaks to you, he's going to do something about it. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you in the next three to five minutes. I want to be uh, expeditious in our time of worship and our time of giving. I want to challenge as many of you as can to get a $50 seed in your hand, those of you who can and will. 
I'll get a $50 seed in your hand. Look at somebody and say, if you can't give 50, then give 100. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 The truth is, the truth is, whenever we understand value, we don't mind investing in what we value. Look at somebody and say, we don't mind investing in what we value. Those of you that are going to sow that seed, you're going to sow a seed of at least $50, would you stand on your feet all over the sanctuary, get it in your hand and stand, thank you. Pastors are standing, men and women of God are standing, thank you. Thank you, I need at least uh, 50 of you to trust God with that seed, would you stand? Stand as quickly as you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. You're going to throw that seed of at least 50. It may be 100. It may be 200 or 300 or 4 or 5. But whatever it is, I want to challenge you to throw a seed of at least 50. The number 50 is the number of Jubilee in the Old Testament. It signifies release. That I see. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, this is my year of release. Not only is it my year of release, tell somebody this is my year of recompense. And tell them this is my year of restoration. Which simply means everything that's had me bound, God's about to free me from it. Hallelujah. And everything that's owed to me, look at somebody and say, I'm about to get it back. I wish I had five or six of you who got some folk that owe you some money who would have jumped on your feet and shot I'm about to get it back this year. Hallelujah. It's my year of release. It's my year. Hallelujah. Of recompense. And then I decree and declare it's your year of restoration. Look at somebody and say, everything that I lost, uh, those things that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, the caterpillar, the grasshopper destroyed. Tell somebody, God's about to give me back years in just a few days. Anybody know he can make it up to you? Get that seed in your hand quickly. Would you do that? And throw that seed of at least 50. Those of you who say, will say, I don't have that, but I'm going to give my best. Stand on your feet. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to wrestle with you. But you're going to give God your best. You're going to give him your best. You're going to give him your best. Thank you. Others of you are standing. You're going to give him your best. Hallelujah. If you were not here this morning to release your tithe and have not had an opportunity to do that and you are a member of this church, then I want to encourage you to pay your tithes tonight. If you're a member of another church, look at somebody and tell them your tithes go home with you to your church home. You don't have no business uh, paying your tithes here if you don't belong here. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. Don't pay your tithes. Amen. To your favorite TV preacher. Give him an offering, but your tithes go home. Mm, that's shot. <laughs> Get your best gift in your hand and stand. Everybody should be standing with something in your hand. Get your best gift in your hand. Reach in your wallet, your purse. If you can't find it, bring it to me. I'll find it for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. The ways by which you can give are on the screen. If you're watching, hallelujah. I want to challenge every person who's watching to sow a seed of at least $50. If you're watching with expectation, if you're watching with faith, you're believing that God's going to speak to you. Hallelujah. These meetings are crazy because I've seen the men of God and the women of God stand on the stage and call out phone numbers of people that were watching. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I've seen them call out the names of people who were watching. Look at somebody and say, God knows your name. Knows everything about you. Hallelujah. Get your best gift in your hand. You're standing. Thank you. You're standing. If you don't have no money, you spend it all on weed. Pull out a track. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Father, how thankful we are for the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. And we thank you that you add no sorrow with it. We understand that rich is not always calculated in monetary terms. We can't tell how rich we are by what we have in the bank. But you've made us rich in mercy. You've made us rich in grace. You've made us rich in love. Hallelujah. When we walk through our houses and see that our children are alive and well, we realize how rich we are. Thank you for the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you allowed our loved ones to wake up this morning. And when we look at them, we realize how rich we are. Thank you. And now, God, we thank you because we decree and declare that if you did that, we know you will supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You're the God of all grace. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. We thank you because everything that we have, you gave us. What we know, you taught us. Where we are, you brought us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. As we give tonight, we give in faith, believing that what you've already done is just the beginning of what you're going to do. You've begun a good work in us, and you're going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, thank God and amen. The ways to give are on the screen, whether you're giving through cash or through checks or through uh, Zelle or Cash App or... Uh, by one of the uh, multiple ways that you can give. If you're giving uh, through uh, credit card or debit card, there is a man, someone on my left and on my right, Minister Inga on my left, uh, Sister Barbara on my right. You can move in that direction uh, as you begin to come to bring your uh, gifts. Come on, begin to come. Uh, begin to come and bring those seeds. Begin to come and bring those seeds from wherever you are. You're giving electronically. Uh, come on. Amen. Amen. If you're giving, amen, physically in the sanctuary, if you're giving online, I want to challenge you to get that seed in your hand and release it tonight. Give as unto the Lord. Now the Lord bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Bless be your coming. Bless you. Glory to God. Thank you. As you release that gift, we give as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you for your liberality, uh, for your faith, and for your faithfulness. If you see someone who is seated near you and they did not have anything to give, just slip something in their hand and tell them my prophecy over your life is that there will never be another time that you want to give and you don't have it. Come on, just slip something in your hand and tell them let me sow a seed into your life because I'm believing God that he's going to give you a harvest hallelujah will you clap your hands and bless God everybody hallelujah how thankful we are for the presence and for the power for the provision for the protection of God who has been so good to us hallelujah uh, we're preparing our hearts to receive the sermonic selection. Uh, you know that for 29 years, every year, God has been faithful and consistent during this prophetic summit. This is the 29th year of this meeting. <laughs> Somebody ought to praise God. I said this is the 29th year of this meeting through uh, difficulties and despondencies, 
through times of challenge and uh, God has been faithful. Even during the pandemic, we were still able to hold prophetic summit. Look at somebody and say, God has been faithful. And I am so thankful for all that he has done. One of the consistent voices uh, that has been with us uh, each year has been the man of God who is known in the earth as the prophet, uh, the bishop, Dr. Todd Hall. And in just a few moments, he will come to bring to us the word of the Lord. He is already in the city. Amen. And we are standing in great anticipation of what God is going to do tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask you to receive the sermonic selection. And then after they have ministered in song, we will give the uh, formal introduction for our speaker. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad But I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down Faithful through every season So why would he fail now? He won't, no, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, no, he, he won't, no, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad. But I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through every season. So why would he fail now? No, he won't. No, he won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. No, he won't. No, he won't. He won't fail, he won't fail, so I came to say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. I've got to say thank you, Jesus, for all Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done and all you've been. I'll say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Lift your voice and say thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus for all you've done. From the bottom of your heart this time, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. One more time by yourself, say thank you. I came to say for all. Thank you, Adonai, for all you've done. My healer, my provider, I'll say thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for all. Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. One more time, six. No, he won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. So in the midst of your trouble, sing thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Lift your voice and sing. Thank you, Jesus, for all. We're standing all over the sanctuary, everybody. With your hands lifted, tell him thank you. More than thanking him for houses and cars and clothes and physical possessions. More than thanking him for material things. Somebody say thank you for sending me a word when I would have lost my mind, when I would have thrown in the towel. Thank you for sending me a word. Each year, one of the most consistent prophetic voices from around the country, he's traveled the world ministry. And I can say that every year that he comes, there is without question a sure word from the Lord. He is my friend, my brother. For more than 30 years, we have a shared close relationship, but more than that, I thank God that he has been a consistent voice. I thank God for the prophetic gift that's on his life, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He is the founder of the Shabbat Fellowship of Churches. Somebody knows about Shabbat. Hallelujah. He is the senior pastor of the Shabbat Church in Orlando, Florida. He is the prophet. He is uh, the bishop. He is known in the earth as Dr. Todd Hall. Will you clap your hands and say thank God for the redoubtable 
his grace. Can we give the Lord that praise? Can we give it to him? I said, can we give it to the Lord today? Before you sit down, this sounds good right now. I'll bring it down just a little. Before you sit down, hug at least three people. Give them some love and let them know who you are. You've been sitting near them all night. First night of the prophetic summit, you might be sitting next to your miracle. Don't you feel better when you get to know who's around you? You may be seated. You'll stand one more time after this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I will say this of the Lord. He is my rock. My God in him. Will I trust? Yes. Now, play softly, son. Let me get this out the way. I'm not a rude renegade, but I, I just finished preaching and got off a three-hour flight, so I don't have no suit on because we had to come straight to the tabernacle. No, no, I know, but I want people to know that I'm not radical. I'm always in order. But um, we just got out of church. And God knows we almost didn't make it to the flight. <laughs> and uh, then we came here and we had the option to be very late just to put on a shirt and tie or get to the presence, get to the house of the Lord where the presence of the Lord is. So we'll be dressed appropriately tomorrow. So can y'all forgive me for this appearance tonight? All right, good, good. No, a lot of quote-unquote big-time preachers don't know how to apologize because they feel like they're so great they can wear what they want to but I want his grace to know that I understand what this week is and I want my uh, best friend to know first lady co-pastor that I would be dressing like some of you not all the way though but I'd be dressing like some of you are but uh Church means more than me than attire and clothes. You have to fulfill your assignment in the earth. Can I get a witness? <clears throat> you can tell I don't have a voice because the change of climate went from Florida to here. So I expect for y'all to pray for me. Amen. Hold, hold the music, son, because I'm not one of them that just get up and say, tap your neighbor. That's not me. I'm way past that. I'm acting my age. I'm resting in my age. I like retirement and not retirement. But I have a covenant with this uh, sage man of God, this apostle in the Lord's church. I think he's one of the greatest voices that we've had in many years. Oh, come on. You can do better. And I want him to live a very long, long time. Witchcraft is real. You may have one or two sitting close to you right now. And you've allowed their gift to blind you to who they are. <laughs> Gifts can be very blinding. Now, do we have authentic worshipers, at least one in each row? Then I want to bless God for this wonderful woman of God who stands tall in the kingdom of God. 
Co-Pastor Otanya. Come on, y'all do better. I love you. I am the pastor of a beautiful, uh, healthy, growing church, not fast, healthy. Because I don't like long hair if it ain't groomed, right? I, I, want, I want the hair to be groomed. So I don't have a growing church where it's growing like out of the woods because I won't let them become uh, junkies for the candy of the gospel. So we have a healthy groomed church and they're watching the night. We had a great time and I have a fellowship but the former pastor of the church uh, is a stage four breast cancer survivor. She's with y'all tonight, Dr. Sonia Mixon. We want to salute her tonight. She will be preaching in the morning. She did not come to support a bishop. She came because she got a job. But she will be here, and I want you all to support and hear what the woman of God has to say. My vice uh, bishop of the Shabbat Fellowship of Churches came in with his wife all the way from Montgomery, Alabama, Bishop Brian Pleasant and Elaine Stan, baby. Can we thank God for them and their presence? Another one of my bishops came all the way from Houston, but she's a diva. She's in one of your rooms changing clothes. She's a married bishop. They visited with her on yesterday. Then they went over to uh, Dr. Keon Henderson's on this morning as guests. And she came in. She's not here. She's not in the, the building, but surely I want to give honor to her. Bishop Tanya Kearney. Can y'all clap for Bishop Tanya Kearney? Last but not least, for now, I want you to thank God for the one we call Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus Christ. You may be seated. I'm about to go to the word of the Lord. Y'all forgive me, I feel old school, I'm not singing, but there's power, power, wonder, working power. Do I have any old school saints in the blood of the lamb? There are certain terms that don't move people no more, but I like them words like I know it was the blood. Talk to me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood. They pierced him in his side. See, some of you can't be saved because these words should be touching your soul. Like saved by his power divine. Saved through new life sublime. Be careful. Life now is sweet. And my joy is complete. Tap somebody and tell them why. Tell them because I'm saved. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and me anso kotabaha. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. So I gave him my old filthy garments. I can tell what year you got saved by quoting songs. And he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm, I get joy when I think about it. You can't tell it. Let me tell it. And he walks with me. I feel the Holy Ghost now. I was sleeping, but I think I got a touch. And he talks with me. And he tells me I'm his own. You finish it. See, only a few of y'all can do that. None other. (laughs) 
Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name. Master, Savior, forget it. Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Kings and kingdoms. Some of y'all done faded out. They shall all pass away. But there's something. Hey! There's something. About, yes, I'm telling you how long I've been saved by the songs that I am regurgitating into your ears. Jesus on the main line. Call him up. The old mother said, if you need more power. She didn't even say power. She said power. I want to pause and say I thank God for being saved tonight. Y'all do know there's a lot of preaching and ain't nobody saved. Y'all do know that, don't you? See, y'all don't want to accept reality tonight. Give me just a little more gain in the monitors, not a lot. But there are people preaching for sport. I cannot name names, thank you, or I would mess up the whole circuit. But I'm telling you, and we can talk, some of the folk we know, they're being used by God, they're just not connected to God. Y'all going to talk to me in the front rows today. We got some in here. You just know God called you to do something and you chose what you wanted to do. And that's why it's not effective because you chose your occupation. But let me talk to three screamers. But them that are led by the spirit of God. Come on, talk to me. They are the sons of God. And let me just go on and say this because y'all too quiet. There's no failure in God. Grandma, you say the failure is not in God. It's in me. So if your ministry didn't work, don't blame it on a demon. Blame it on you chose what you wanted to do for God. I'm to Mahashi and I. I'm trying. I want you, I know once my days are over, y'all will go to having some kind of revival because my days are the hardest. I, 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 uh, I'll be looking at that flyer and I'll be getting so confused. Why I'm always first. You have to be careful bringing me first because I'm getting old enough to talk to you and may have one day or two say, I, 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 I may, I'm talking to folk that are really used of God. Some of you have to treasure your anointing so much that if God is using you and you know someone else may not be of God, you got to make it hard for them. Too many people are using this as if it is an Olympic sport. And they be telling you, Doc, you need to put me last. Why, you that good? I don't ask him where to put me. He can put me where he wants to put me. You have to be authentically who God chose you to be. I want you to look at your neighbor and ask them, see if they can answer, when did you get saved? Go on and ask them. Let's see. No, no, give some dates. Talk about it. Because some of the preachers ain't even remember. They look. 1979, 8.36 p.m. at Kelly Temple Church of God in Christ, 106 Red, Redfern Avenue, 1801. And I got saved on a Saturday night. So I gave my heart to God in 79. I started walking with him in 83. Now you should be able to know when you were born.
We must stop letting people preach who can't tell you when they got saved. That should be the biggest day of your life. I had two spliffs and a fifth of Bacardi. See, you don't remember what you were doing. See, God didn't save me because life was bad. I didn't give him my life because I was suicidal. I was on my way to a block party. Going to go meet, the name will remain anonymous. And being under the influence of reefer, y'all don't call it that. I know yours is medicinal marijuana, reefer. And a fifth of Bacardi. When the reefer was strong back in the 70s, when I got saved, it gave you the munchies. So I went straight to McDonald's and had two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickle, onions on a sesame seed bun. There's somebody on this side is too deep. I came to hear him prophesy. You can go home. See, that's what's wrong with church now. They're becoming entertained. But we are overcomers by the words of our testimony. You don't want to know if I'm saved first. You just want me to tell you what your name is. I had me a Big Mac. Some real fries. One of them strong, nice high C orange drinks. I wish I had some folk who remember their age. And I thought I was going to get on the train and head to Beach 54th Street in Far Rockaway. And I heard the church singing Kelly's Temple. I had on a leather bomb jacket and an Applejack hat. Y'all don't know nothing about what I'm talking about. Cock to the side. Driving in the back, sun rooftop, digging in the scene with the gangster lead. You unsanctified souls. And I didn't call out to God, He called out to me. I went into that little church at the time because I enjoyed singing and show and so did my demons. See, in church, during worship, Satan enjoys that because he used to be over the choir. But when the word comes, he gets a little nervous. Unless it's one of his own preaching. Can I get some verbal conversation? I said, God, if you're going to save me, save me cool. I don't want to be no holy roller. And I'm from four generations of holy rollers. That's why I didn't like them. I said, I don't like all that tissue. White stuff coming up out my mouth like a dog foaming. See, y'all didn't get, see this generation lost. These alphas and Zs like, what? Y'all don't know a thing about tarrying, do you? Y'all know something about it? took us three hours to get saved. They get saved in 10 seconds of repeat after me. This is so unfair. That's why they backslide easy because we ain't got three hours to do it over again. I'm already preaching. I do this the same way every year. I just get up, start talking. The prophet... Brother e Elijah did not go into the woman's house talking about God. He went in talking about cake. Then a conversation led to Christ. Some of y'all talk about God and it don't go nowhere. He bring me every year during the Super Bowl. Not this year. He called me. The 
mother pulled my Applejack off my hat. And I missed these words. Then I'll go into whatever y'all came for. And she said, the blood of Jesus. And I'm a pastor's son, so I started laughing. I was like, do your thing, Mother Butler. Then Mother Granger came. Then Mother Denim. I said, here come the Crips. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> See, y'all didn't get saved because they build a circle around you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all didn't. And they start calling Jesus and saying words like, sick him, Holy Ghost. I said. Now, if you didn't get saved this way, don't be jealous that I did. Because I got saved against my will. I was not struggling, dying from something and say, God, I'll give you my soul. No, I was chilling. I wasn't ready to give God anything. I just smoked the two joints and was high in less than three minutes. Normally, I'd hang around for a while and you'd be like, what's up? And holding your nose and posing. She said, the blood of Jesus? I said, uh-oh. And I told my demons, we in trouble. They were leaving one by one. We'll see you. I was under the third row, speaking in tongues, falling out. And I knew I was on the floor and I was telling myself, Todd, get up. See, that's when you know you're saved, when you don't have power no more. I was under there saying, you are under the pew. You are doing things under the influence of the Holy Ghost that we couldn't make you do. I got saved that night. The pakatasian, the process of sanctification began. I'm still being sanctified 40 years later. Look at somebody, I've been preaching 40 of them, but look at your neighbor and tell them I'm still in the process of sanctification. Some of y'all still cuss, some of y'all still drink, some of you still got a bad spirit, some of y'all... Oh, I don't hear nobody. Look at them tell me I'm still in the process of sanctification. But I'm sure enough baptized and filled. I want the devil to hear me with the pressure. Y'all ain't talk. Holy Ghost and that with. And believe I'll run on. Y'all hush your mouth. I want you to clap for the success of your neighbor that's sitting next to you and look at them while you're clapping. Come on, don't pity Pat. You want them blessed. I don't know if this is a real name, but who's R-H-O-N-N-I-E, like Johnny, but it's Ronnie? Stand up. That's your birth name? You go by that. Really? Are you branding that name? Do you own a business? Are you attempting to start something in, I see you as an entrepreneur, but you give up too easy. Step out, step out and step up. Come to me. Now this church knows me. I don't lay hands on nobody. I'm not one of those prophets blowing it. That ain't me. You have millions of dollars embedded within you, but you give up too easy. What is that? L E I G H L L E I G H. That's your makeup brand name. That's the makeup brand. So God must be targeting your brand. 
Are we jealous or are we happy? God's about to breathe favorably on your brand. You're not married. Let me say something to you. Now I'm going to get deep, but I'm, I'm tired of these folk not, not trying to encourage you. But let me tell you something. If you ever get married, let me put it like this. If he can't accept you at your weight, then make him wait forever. Because there are some beautiful, full-figured women on this planet. Why y'all not talking over here? Y'all looking around, but y'all wives ain't skinny. They just carry it well. I don't want a day, but what month were you born? June. June? That's a good month. Because I'm born in June, too. Me, I'm, I'm me. Mine is on the 21st. So when's yours? All right. Same day. I just want to play around because I'm sleepy. No, I'll show you my life. I'm born on June 21st. I'm going to Mahashianda and to the person over here who didn't know me that came to do your inspection. Now that you see I'm a little real, ease up now, okay? Because people can't get blessed if they don't expect while they have somebody inspecting. Either you believe God or you don't. When I lay hands on you, everything that was held up in the realm of the spirit is going to be released. I need you to be careful who you fall in love with, who you let in your circle, where you decide you're going to live. Stop stopping. Stop stopping because of confusion, pain, or discouragement, or no support. Just stop it. God says, I've had this for you as if I had it for Oprah when she was a little girl. He said, within you, you will birth millions millions and when I lay hands on sister Rhonda or Ronnie Lee your brand will grow you will grow and those who praise God for her you will be blessed do it now in the name of Jesus Christ Come on, let it out. The summit has begun. You may be seated. That Denise, and y'all stay with her in worship. I thought that Denise was spelled D-E-N-I-S-E. -E. Isn't that the normal way? So who's D-E-N-I-C-E? D-E-N-I-C-E. -E. Uh, forget that. Do I have any relatives in here with the last name Ford? Who's Ford? What now? Who knows her? When I say no, who knows how to reach her right now? That's what no mean to me. You don't know me if you can't reach me. Can you tell her that I'm talking about her? I'm not sure if it's her. Can you ask her what's her first name? Hold on. Y'all said her name is what? How is it spelled? Well, then why y'all make me do this hard work? 
I don't want the phone. I'm not Cleo. I just want you to talk to her for me. I want... She just had a birthday last month. Ask her. Talk to her. I don't want to hear it. I want you to talk to her. You done sang to all of us. Talk to the lady. January the 2nd, okay, that's who I'm looking for. I need you to tell her, I don't know whether they're up, down, in, or out. I need you to tell her, first of all, where is she? Tell her, don't lie. Oh, her mom's in rehab. Okay, she gets past. Tell her this, I don't know who this is, but tell her wherever she is right now. If she screams and dance and she's going to feel embarrassed, tell her God said he's sending over a 12-foot angel to Chris. How does it feel to be... Pro prophesying with your uncle. How does that feel? It feel good, huh? When I was talking to Sister Ford, whatever her name is, the Lord said, Tell every woman in here that has a son, this year I'm saving your sons. Watch every last one of them, even the five behind bars. God said, I'm saving every last one of them. And some of y'all so deep as if you ain't never been close to going to jail or been in there. I ain't never been, but I've been this close. I'm almost done. Excuse me. You got a son? How old is he? Where is he? He's in a group home for what? Mental illness. Because when you were screaming, I heard something else screaming louder than you and it bothered my right ear very bad. I didn't know what it was. Now I do. I need to tell you this. And I need some worshipers and praises. God says, tell you, this was going to lead to suicide. This would have been the third attempt. God said, my say. Thank you, Jesus. Uh-oh. I feel the Holy Ghost. Now I feel the Holy Ghost. You have put a lot of effort and prayers into this child. Even when you say you're giving up, you did not. It almost took you out and, and took your strength. But God says, tell her this. In 48 hours, I'm going to start talking to him myself. And I'm going to tell the demons like I spoke to the legion. Come out of the man, y'all. Where's your mouth at in this church? You may be seated. We are becoming... To desensitize to the Holy Spirit. A name came and left. I've never heard this name before in my life, and I've heard many names. This person is going to be very, very wealthy as well, but they must dedicate a certain portion of their life and a certain part of their finances to God. Your name is like Melanique. Where are you? Where? Girl, you better talk to me and stop hiding. Don't be afraid of me. I'm the nice prophet. 
All of my prophecies start off scary, but they end up real nice. All of them. L-I-S-T-E-R, Lister. Is that your mate name or married? All right. That so ends. Is that your mate name or married? Huh? I brought that up because your name's going to change soon. Now you can act like you don't want it, but you lying. God wants to erase 14 years of your past. You've been telling God, Lord, I see everything going on, but I need you to send me somebody that don't know me and speak clear. Now he's speaking. And he's honoring a request you made. Lord, if you speak to me and I know it's you, I'll do this, that, and the other. You're going to owe God a lot, baby. Because he's speaking so clear to you. I don't want the day, but what month were you born? July? All right, me and her born on the same day. That's an okay month. <laughs> Especially on the 25th. What day you born? 25th. Now, I want to pray for you. <laughs> then I'm going up there to preach. Either you know what to do from here or you don't. There's somebody in the front row, I won't say who, who I would have prophesied to, but when I was up testifying, you didn't care. You don't come to church just for a prophecy. You come to hear whatever God has to say. Excuse me a minute, sir. I'll be right back, Melanie. You can put your hands down. What do you do for a living? No, no, you, yes. You don't know what you do? I know, but what is it? For who? You look confused about your own job, doubt. I'm going to tell you anyway, even though you look confused to me, I'm going to tell you anyhow. If you become the man that could praise and never go in and out of church again, right? Just Lord, whatever you say. God says, I'm going to give him his own business. He's not created to actually work for anyone. And you know this. But you got to stick with something. So you're only on this job to learn certain things to do what you have to do on your own. Do you believe that? Oh, you sure about that? Good. I'm going to Mahashiai. Man, your heart is real. Your family has to see that the God you serve is going to make you what you say he said. God's ready to prove to your family that you will be one of the best success stories of that bloodline. And somebody ought to shout yes. I'll let you run when you want. Melanie. You seem to have several businesses also in your head. I'm going to lay hands on your head. We're going to bring peace. We're going to erase 14 years of pain and persecution. We're going to set you free where you can start living the life that God has always called you to live. Don't think I'm being funny, but I'm binding every demon that thinks he can have a party in your soul. And come and go as he chooses. When I lay hands on Sister Lister, all of you that know that deliverance is real, you will start clapping. And if anyone in your family or in your heart has any addictions, they'll be free before the month is out. Do it now in Jesus' name.
You may be seated. I've got to read, preach quickly, come back tomorrow for a full-fledged service. Um, maybe this is for tomorrow, but I'm looking for J-E-R-R-Y-E. I don't even know how to say that name. All right, we'll save that for tomorrow. Hopefully, she's watching. She'll bring James with her. I hear some of my son, Pop still got it. I ain't never lost it. I am paper Bible saved. I'm not cell phone saved. Yeah, hopefully she'll bring James with her. That's all I want to say. And another person that probably could not be here. But I'm praying for someone. Y'all can help me with this also. I don't know why people must be online from everywhere because God's just speaking. I need you. I'm going to quote a little uh, child's fairy tale, whatever we call it. The name I say uh, are the people that's about to become millionaires and they're going to bless you. So old McDonald had a phone. Oh, Jesus. What's her name? Oh, she's a McDonald? Some of y'all jealous because she got two in one night. Huh? But you see her behavior? That's why God's drawn to her. Behavior commands blessings. On this farm, they had some chicks, and this particular person is praying for somebody. Their name, this young girl's name is Abby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A-B-B-Y. That's your daughter's name. Really? Where is she? And... Hold on, she up there. And how old is she? Because the Lord said full ride scholarship. That's what I just heard. We got to get out of here. I got to go. Now, wait a minute, I'm still props, I gotta go, because now there's a real McDonald family watching. They wanna be here. But the Lord told me, I, and who's ever watching them online, find out whether they're on there. The Lord said, they're gonna bless you, but you gotta jump for this. But they can't right now, they're in Florida. But they come here. It's a husband and wife. As a matter of fact, the husband, I don't know her name, works or worked for Greyhound Bus. You that claim you're watching online, start doing your work. <coughs> and watch them write you. You're about to get money from unexpected places. God said, all the money you put out is going to wisely come back to you, but it's coming from places that you unexpect. The Lord said, my son, I want to pay you for every false accusation 
every sickness, every moment of bitterness. For your latter days are about to become your best days. You will not die from ministry. When you leave, it will be because you will have finished your course. You will keep the faith. I'm telling God tonight as a friend of yours, I hear him speaking through me, but now I want to cut in and tell him something. He can keep talking through me if he choose. But I want him to honor something for you and your wife. This is Mahashandai. This is what I want the Lord to do, and I need 200 screamers after this. I want God, before the meeting's over, to give both of you new organs. Because God says your organs are expiring. And to the two hidden witches in here that prayed that, we send this back to you. God never makes anything without having spare parts. And if three of you would have stood up, you'd have been healed of diabetes too. But because you sat in your chair, you become comfortable with your disease. Lord, before this week has concluded, Breathe within your two servants. No sheblande, rebakupata sambre cura. Newness of life. New livers, new kidneys, new organs, a best, a good heart. God, do this for us. In the name that only matters and that is above every name. Jesus Christ. Ah, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You may be seated. Give me 25 minutes. Repakuran. The hope.
when you praise God for someone else, God will put your name next. But you got to put someone else's condition ahead of yourself. I want you to quickly, we're not resetting, don't make me work hard, but let's go to the Bible just to get a few principles. The prophetic summit is in session. Hallelujah. We have so many other great preachers that can do the preaching. Pastor Ruby Hollins, I, I, I'm sure she murdered everything that she could on this morning. And that's my sister. She used to travel with me. And I thank God when I see God using people to the capacity that he's using people. You need God to change your organs now. Not by the end of the week. You don't have that long. And they come a and there are things that God has just shared with me that I didn't know that I want you to know he hears you. I will never near. I will never voice it, but he hears you. He hears you. And when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the pakura baha, The spirit of the Lord will raise up a stand. You didn't come this far to lose. Hashimato kai. Presimo kutandanso. You're holding stuff in, but God said that's fine. God said, tonight I'm going to visit you in a sweet way. And everything that's been done to you will go back to who did it. And God says, I don't care who it is. You have too many layers of God's hands upon you. For the devil to think he could just penetrate. I'm going to put my finger in the middle of your forehead. I don't know why. God said there will be peace in your mind. You will bounce back until those that thought you wasn't will get sick at your presence. When I touch this precious woman of God, all of you that know what a Shabbat praise is, you that are online, I really want y'all to act like this is a matter of life and death. And I want you to praise God until the walls of Jericho come down. Do it now in the name. I don't believe Dr. Mixon was actually brought here to preach or teach. She was brought here for your wife. Let me leave it. Be seated. Y'all are taking my 25 minutes away. No, I'm done. I'm not a prophetic junkie. I'm done.
Nothing is stronger than the written word of God. Nothing. Because now if I just bless those who I'm prophesying to, what do the rest of you get? What do the rest of these people that came to hear God receive? This is not my scriptures. I'm about to read them and I'm going to fly my kite. Then hopefully they'll come back tomorrow with people and y'all support me. I got something special tomorrow. It says these words in Chronicles. It said, believe in the Lord your God. You will be established. Believe in not prophets, his prophets. When you find one male or female that's his your life is supposed to begin to prosper. I want to put a word out in the atmosphere for a hundred of you who will tune in and bless me now. God says, after this week, you shall prosper. And then the scripture said, beloved, I wish above all. See, y'all don't want to read about that ye would prosper and being health, even and. And my God shall supply. Hallelujah, my husband. You've been misdiagnosed by one doctor. You've been misdiagnosed. I ain't no doctor, but I'm enjoying this. They want to tell you one thing and it will produce fear in you and make all your levels go crazy and stay flat. But God said, I, you and I, meaning you and him, will amuse and amaze your doctors when this is over. God says, I want to show them who I am through you. He shall supply. All of our need according to. Come on, talk bishops, pastors, apostles. His riches in glory. By who? Yeah. Jesus not only saved, he pays. Now, you that are bobbleheading, if that's your style, fine. But you that need a miracle, you got to talk back to God every now and then. That's why your grandparents and great-grandparents live to be 100. Because when the preacher was talking, they say, yes, sir, pastor. Go to God. Y'all. Y'all dying at 40 and 50. Closed mouths don't get fed. I just don't believe in all that screaming. And we don't believe in folk who don't work becoming millionaires. See, you want something that's very out of your reach from God, but you won't give God what's in your reach. High praise equals high salaries. I don't, you know, low praise, low salaries, no praise. But I want you to turn to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 20. I want to read this verse. I want to dialogue about it. Then we're going to go straight to Luke chapter uh, 7. I mean, five verses one through seven. So we're going to Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Then we're going to Luke chapter number uh, five, verses one through seven. Right. Now, now, I'm going to be prophetically teaching this. So the 30 people that push me, you don't have to stand. Watch how your life change in less than a week. And I promise that. I'm not hiding. You can Google me. You can find me. I'm at church every Wednesday and every Sunday. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The word, the Lord working with them and confirming, talk to me, whatever they preached with signs following. Let me just keep going fast because y'all look tired. I'm tired of folk preaching and there's no proof. I 
need some preaching with proof. Talk to me. I need those words you say God say to become flesh. Because I'm still waiting on a few prophecies from three years ago. It's not that they ain't real, but can you find out what God's going to do for me right now? Now, is this some of your concerns? Tell me yes so we can move on. It's not that we don't believe God, but I, I, I'm tired of God teasing me with things that he ain't going to do till 10 years from now. I think I need to bring clarity. I've got some theologians that won't talk. The only time God gives you a prophecy that, that is so far away is there's still some sins you have not eradicated. Let me talk to talkers. Can you accept your role in the delay? I'm going to ask you again to y'all. Can you accept your role in why things have been delayed? God is expiring a certain group of preachers, not because they can't preach, but they're preaching what he does not plan on doing. The whole Bible is God's word. But you got to make sure that your word is in season. Uh-oh, it's some of y'all. I don't know why folk don't come to my church because I can preach. You just ain't preaching what he's prepared. You're preaching what you've studied, not what he demands. If I got 10 folk, talk to me so I can preach to you. So Jesus never sent them out to preach without sanctioning what they preach by creating a sign. Now, I'm going to go forward because we got to go to Luke. 30 folk jump on this and I promise you by the end of the week you will be blessed. The Lord is about to bless some of you with more than you ever had because you're going to be a sign to somebody else that he can God needs receipts. I would talk over here, but y'all don't talk enough, but the middle. And he needs people who he can use as proof. That's why the past six, seven years has been hell for some of you. And he let everybody get in your business. And he let you do nothing about it. Because how he's going to shut him up is what he's about to give you in your season. If you ever want to kill an enemy, succeed. Y'all too quiet in here. And thou preparest a table before me in the barboskatan, in the presence of my enemy. And then you anoint my head with oil. Then everything concerning me runs over. Then surely from that time for goodness and mercy, no more pain shall follow me. And now my new job, because I'm so wealthy, is all I do is go to church. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You going to church again? You in church again? What you do during the day? Sleep. What you do in the afternoon? Read. God needs proof. I need somebody that he can bless his people better than anybody in the secular world. So he needs spiritual Beyonce's and Jay-Z's and P. Diddy's. Y'all ain't talk. The devil is using the money God. But he let them have it first because he said the wealth of the wicked. It can't be transferred until it's earned. Y'all stop rebuking these sinners and R&B singers. Let them make your money. Once the world system gets broke, there's nothing to transfer. 
Leave your baby daddy alone. Let him hit the lottery. God know how to harm him. You don't need a check once a month. You need all of what he didn't pay at one time. See, some of you ain't going to scream on this. I'd rather have mine one lump sum. I'm tired of fragmented blessings. Little sprinkle here. Now we got about five people here. I'm tired of hearing sermons about success and money. Go on home because you're broke already anyway. Jesus ain't never preached on money. You are lied. 70% of the parables are around economics. He gave one one talent, gave one two, one five in the reverse, five, two, and one, and somebody didn't know what to do with what he gave. If you studied about the talent, one talent is enough for one person to take care of themselves for the rest of their life. So the one with one, he only gave him one because he only had himself to take care of. But you didn't know that. The one with two was possibly married and had to take care of him and his wife. The one with five had a wife and probably three kids. The Bible said he gave it to them according to their several abilities. Not because they were holier, not because they were better. They had more responsibility. Irresponsible people should not be making money. Folk who sleep late should not get paid. An organist should never get paid more than the preacher. Not ever. Nowhere near. They barely pray for the preacher. They barely carry a Bible. They barely dance when he's preaching. You a prop. Now, somebody took that personal because the musicians ain't say nothing but musicians who play loud for folk to shout but don't scream loud when who they play for preach. Something wrong with that all the way. A man that'll be at the mall with his wife or his girlfriend and scream loud for other women but never scream loud when you get dressed. Something ain't right with that. Real women get mad. Oh, go be with her. Don't you ever let somebody else get what you can. So God is putting a grace. I only need 15 more minutes. God's putting a grace on the next level of preachers, male and female. And that is he's going to prove that you're one of his because every time you preach, he's going to make what you preach happen. And once folks see that your word has power, they're going to start gravitating back to your ministries. The pew is getting empty not because the pul pulpit is fake. The pew is getting empty because they tired on waiting for what you say. They like this my 1800th time being told I'm be a millionaire. Right. To where now you ain't even excited about it anymore. That's right. The first time you heard it, you fell out. Second time you did a somersault. Third time you cried. Sixteenth time you said, I, I, I know I'm, I'm going to be a millionaire. You so good at it now, you can look in the mirror and say, thus saith the Lord unto myself. But this is what I told my church. Listen, and if it makes sense, senior brother, tap me on the shoulder. God cannot give you anything that's prophesied if you can't locate a scripture for it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I done lost half the building over there. Some of you are pulling on his power, but you're ignoring what he wrote. God stands by his word, not by his power. I wish I had 18 Bible lovers. Not by might, nor by power, 
but Palan, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. We got people that are so smooth with the Bible that they can make a scripture say what it ain't saying just to cover what they shouldn't be doing. Oh yeah, they going to hell. They are. Am I boring y'all in this section? Well, push me a little more because I need some help over here. When I'm going through something that I can't deal with because I'm human, when I'm going through a season or a moment or a minute or an hour, I then try to find wise people and they try to encourage me. When that don't work, I am tuned enough because I've been with God enough to start searching the scriptures. Y'all ain't happy. When I finish searching the scripture, I'm looking for a character reference in the scripture. That if I can find someone he did it for. Then he is obligated. Oh y'all to do it again. But some of y'all trying to be the first at everything. The Bible's written it. It cannot be rewritten. Once I can show him that he did it for someone else. I can then ignite that power. And I can tell him this for 10 screamers. If you did it before. La Manchando. I'm almost there. Let me give an example. Say if one of us was dying, God forbid. And the doctor told us and our family, time for hospice. Mm -hmm. But you and I ain't ready to go. Yeah, we can do the church thing and act like we're ready to go and be like, if it's the Lord's time, I'm ready. I'm not ready. See how y'all are dishonest with yourself? Now, I can't tell him, Lord, leave me. I'm your servant. I'm anointed. I'm a prophet. My church need me. My family needs me. Lord, I'm not married yet. Lord, I need to spend my millions. I can tell him all of that and all of that be something he can hear, but it will not activate that I'm staying. Right. When I do this, the first two people that jump and get serious, you'll be blessed. But if I take the posture of Hezekiah yes, sir. Yes, sir. and turn my face to a wall, Some of you will get a prophecy this week, but the best way to get a miracle is find someone that received one and repeat the posture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I would turn my face to the wall and either you would do me or I'll do you. I'd be like, boy, turn with me to the wall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Lord, this is the short man crew. We done been with you a long time. And Lord, we're crying out while we're in pain. If it was a woman with the issue of blood, you got to know how to press. Oh, y'all real quiet now. Stop trying to get it out of scripture. Say you married the wrong person once. Say you married the wrong person twice. Say, unfortunately, you gravitated and married the wrong person three times. And look at the deep folk. That's too many. There's a woman in the Bible that did it five. And I hear you. I could never do that. Don't worry. Ain't five people want to marry you. But the Bible. See, you're not going to shoot down scripture. Because that woman was not a harlot or a hoe. Or the Bible would have said he cast unclean spirits out. The Bible don't tell you who's right or wrong. The emphasis on her story, which should have been your emphasis on marriage for 30 women and two men who will scream, is you should have spoke to Jesus first, not last. She finally had a conversation with him after the sixth man. Why wasn't he the first man? The mistake you made was not a bad marriage. You didn't hold the conversation with him first. 
I see six people offended just because you've been di 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 divorced. So have I. I ain't offended. And she was saved in Holy Ghost field. And she had no demons and neither did I. But neither one of us had that talk with God. Y'all had a talk with flea and fornication to try to be saved. You didn't have that conversation with Jesus about never thirsting again. A man or woman can quench your flesh, but only God can quench your thirst. Well, I don't fornicate no more. That's why there's another word stronger than fornication. It's called adultery. But let me move on. And none of these are demons. They are key points to make you say, I need a manual that can help me deal with something I should be over by now. It's the B-I-B-L-E. You reading 50, 100 books from Barnes and Nobles and leaving the best-selling book of all 100 years on the shelf. All these motivational speakers ain't doing nothing but quoting scriptures. All their books is a, re a, a reversion of the Bible without saying Jesus. But let me talk to 30 people. But if you call Jesus, now nah, don't handle me. Talk to me. He will. God is about to release. I'm going to my clothes. God is about to release a different style of preaching upon the earth. I'm prophesying now that when people are speaking from the mouth of God, God will cause that to be followed with signs. Yes, For some of you who will jump and scream on this, you'll have it before you get home at times. Why? Because you believed it when he said it. Belief turns into bountiful blessings. Yes, sir. Bountiful blessings. Yes, sir. I need some of you to start looking the part, being the part, becoming proof that what you're preaching is not just a great message, but that what you say is so real that is showing through you. I want some of you that have talked to me before I get AME to be blessed from the crown of your heads to the sanctified soles of your feet. Blessed in the field. Blessed in your storehouses. You see how you ain't talking? Blessed when you come. You will live in houses that you have not built. And you will eat from fields where you have not tilled nor strawed. And I shall make your enemies your footstool, saith the Lord. I want to show you how we're going to activate the summit. Then I still need to go to Luke and holler. I want 50 of you who know you have the Holy Ghost to talk to a one person or two people apiece. Tell them this. Watch their behavior. If their behavior don't match what you say, then that's because they don't have enough scripture to activate it. Just look at your neighbor and say these three words. Paid in full. Paid in full. I preached at my church last month 
Jesus paid it all and then he paid it off. Now, the reason why it's going to happen, Bishop Kearney, is because of whose mouth it came out of. Yes, sir. And let the words of my mouth, come on, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So in the book of Luke chapter 5, you don't have to turn there. They can put it on the screen and just scroll one verse to the next and stop at 7 because I'm ready to holler. In, in the book of Luke, which is not one of the disciples' gospels because Luke is not a disciple. Come on, talk to me. Luke is a doctor. Now, if I say this and 18 of you don't scream, you missed it. It's time for anointed professionals to speak. I done heard your gospel. I need somebody who's gone through the process and understands their steps to this thing. You don't just wake up a doctor, but you can just wake up a preacher. Tomorrow you can wake up a pastor. Luke is a physician. Luke has put in work. And Jesus allowed a professional to write one of the gospels. All of you in here that read the Bible and love it and you've read any of the Gospels, I'm going to see if you scream. God said, I'm about to turn the Gospel you read into a professional. You're about, you're about to have more than just a hoop and a holler. God said, I'm about to put businesses with your name on it. I'm going to put ideas in your children. I'm about to show you I'm God. God ain't never been a preacher. He's always been a creator. Some of you are great preachers. You're just poor management in anything else. God has always been a creator. In this text, because they know the story is about fishes and nets breaking. Yes. This is where some of you start screaming because I'm ready to go. And that is, you know it's a big, powerful scripture when Jesus shows up to your job. Yes. God ain't meeting folk at church no more. You're going to meet him at church. God says, I'm about to come where you work. See, you missed it. Peter's a fisherman. He didn't meet Peter at some revival. He went to Peter's workplace when he was washing. He's about to throw in the towel. He's had it for the day. I want you to tell your neighbor this and keep that one neighbor for your friend for the next 11 minutes. Tell them, don't shut down on me right now. Don't shut down. Because some of you are so frustrated, you're clocking out. Don't clock out yet. Because the Lord is on his way to your job, your business. He's about to come check on you to see how well you're doing. And what I like about this passage of scripture for three screamers in the back who want to be blessed is he shows up when you're ready to give up. And you got to mean you through. That's when he start talking. That's how men talk when they know that their woman is really leaving. I want to say something to you. 
long as she's screaming and crying and ain't went nowhere, you she'll she'll be all right. But once she pack him for real, he'd be like, Well, where you going? We haven't even talked. I've been trying to talk to you for 12 years. Most women ain't leaving men for cheating. That's bad. Y'all leaving them for lying, but that's okay. And the men ain't say amen and they know they liars. But, you know, once you find a woman that knows you better than you know yourself, where you going? Beside hell, where you going? Why wouldn't you want your woman to know that she's your second savior? What's wrong with that? You got the Holy Ghost. God gave us something before the Holy Ghost called intuition. See, see you coming and going. Why would you lie to a person who already know what you're going to say? Stupid. Don't laugh it off. Get a book. Go to the Bible. See how that ends. It ends with a man having bald heads and losing his eyes and his strength. Find me a man in the Bible that did what you did and came out okay. You won't be the first. Because the Bible's finished being written. I done took all the player cards. Give me them player cards. Oh, you're right through it. He goes to Peter's job. Let me hear A, please. Yeah, he goes. I'm not there, but he goes to Peter's job. He almost got me. And when he goes to Peter's job, he asks the question, have you caught anything? I'm going to say this for my three members for the rest of the service. God wants to hit you where you hurt. He wants to talk to your emptiness, your void. He wants you to finally address it before it kills you being held. First question was, have you caught anything? Transparency says for two folk over here that's not talk that if you want a miracle from God, you got to be honest with yourself. So Peter opened his mouth and said, nothing. We've caught nothing. If I say this and 50 you scream, I'll be blessed. If not, I walk out the door and that is nothing has been your best friend for a while. Because it's the reason why God is drawn to you for this conversation. I told somebody this, may preach it, I don't think so, but I told someone this, this is for 80 women who were screaming, two men up front who want to be blessed, who still mad that I exposed them through the scripture. Ten of y'all catch this and get happy. It was not the illness of the woman with the issue of blood that took her to Jesus. It was broke. She ran out of money. Some of you are using money on your sickness. So God did few of us a favor for screamers and that is he took us through a season of withholding the money. And anybody that can praise God without it is a worshiper. Anybody that can barely pay their bills and light bill and still go to church screaming and jumping, that's a worshiper. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Huh? Just tell them I'm saved. Come through here. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Fire. Fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side. And I'm running. He goes 
I'm almost there, Pastor Johnson. To the yes, sir. workplace yes, sir. of Brother Peter. Yes, he says, have you, that's my son, caught anything? I've got one more economic discussion to have, then let's go to church. And this is for 80 of you who will be wealthy this year. And that is, when you're asking me whether I caught fish, you're also asking me, have I turned a profit today? Now I'm coming over here to the silence of the lamb section. That be dressing fly but ain't got no money flying you know where. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. So we can stop being an illusion because black people are good at dressing, poor at addressing. The problem is we become professionals at dressing up broke. I want to help you out of there. So when Jesus said, have you caught anything? He's basically asking, have you turned a profit today? Because if I catch fish for a living, then fish becomes revenue. So he's asking Peter, have you made any money today? Peter says, and I need my 80 people, no. Peter also has a dialogue with Jesus because he recognizes, I'll preach in the back, that Jesus has no boat, no fishing rods, no net, no tackle, and he's going to tell me what to do. Now, I need to tell you what the topic of my sermon is, then 50 you scream, then the subtopic is for the rest of you to jump or you'll miss it. The topic from an educational standpoint is the miracle is in the message. Because I told you, once you preach, signs will follow, right? The second topic for prophetic people who will jump and scream is he caught no fish, which meant nothing was drawn to his line. But God said, after tonight, reel it in. Reel it on in. Come on. I shall not. Reel it in. No, -uh, it ain't never easy when the thing is on you. You got to pull and tuggle and see, I got to teach you that the struggle you're in is because you got something on your line. This is not meant to look easy. I could tell that some of you have never gone a fishing. That's how the Bible write it, gone a fishing. But when you catch something on your line, you and that thing go into a wrestling. I'm closing, I'm gonna give you the mic. I went fishing two or three times in my life. I did not like it because I grew up going to the fish market. I enjoyed the easy way out. Oh yeah. I was paying for it because I didn't know how to catch it. If y'all talk, I'll come back over there. I went, long story short, Went out with some wealthy people and they were enjoying being on this boat. Yes, sir. Talking and laughing. And I was trying to rationalize. We could have did this on land. I didn't understand how they could be excited catching nothing for hours. I wish I had a church. One of the little boys came over to me and said, Brother Hall or Todd, we can tell, I got two keys in me, so wait on me, that you're not enjoying 
fishing. They said to me, that's probably why you ain't caught nothing yet. Because I ain't got help. To be a good fisherman, you got to go in there with expectation. It was about two and a half hours later that my line began to jerk. I didn't know, but out of nowhere, I got excited. I looked at a few of the other people that were on the boat. Where's my sanctified church? Yeah, uh huh. And they said to me, You're excited now. But now you got to find out how to get it from where it is to where you need it to be. Ah, 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 Lord. that fishing rod and I began to act like I knew what I was doing but I would have lost everything if I didn't let somebody else get in my business somebody had to come from behind me I wish I had my church now. And said, uh, let me put my hands on your hands. And uh, when I tell you to apply strength, pull it up. Well, took about 20 minutes. And I got my fish out the water. I started bragging. I was walking around. I caught my first fish. One of the boys, I hope somebody screamed here, came to me and said, now that you're excited, that's too small for waiting so long. Throw it back in. Last year, you caught something, but God said it was too small for you. Throw it back in. You ought to grab somebody's hand. Give me my volume and give me gain now. And let me preach and look them in the face and say, oh, neighbor. Oh, some of y'all are doing it. I think I got some help. Say, oh, neighbor. God is about to give you uh, the desires uh, of your heart. Uh, you better grab somebody's hand uh, that looks like they want you blessed uh, and tell your neighbor in the next 24 hours your line is going to start jerking. Uh, on the end of your line uh, there is a business idea. On the your line there's a marriage that you deserve to have come on here I'm ready to go you ought to shake two or three people hands and tell them are you ready to reel it on in cause tell them it's been a long long time that you've been able to show anybody a miracle that has happened in your life but tell them for the next three weeks you gonna get a miracle every week but don't wait until the battle is over but shout you gotta shout right now you better shake somebody's hand and look them eyeball to eyeball and tell them I don't know how long you've been waiting on your miracle. But tell them God told me to tell you that the wait is over and now the best is yet to come. You've got to praise the Lord before you get what you ask for and let the devil know you thought you had me but I, I got away you better tell your neighbor come on and tell him I got away I got away Cut 
somebody else's hand and look them in the face and say, oh, neighbor, what have you been waiting for? And how long have you been waiting on it? Tell them, did you ever feel like giving up or throwing in the towel or just walking away? Tell them, if you said yes, somebody's on his way to your house. Let me tell you who's coming. Some call him wonderful. Some call him counselor. Some call him mighty God. Some call him everlasting father. But I call him a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. You better tell somebody who the Lord is to you. Go on and testify. Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the ending. Bridge over troubled water. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Friend to the friendless. Hope for the hopeless. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Shalom, but at the end of the day, his name is Jesus. She. We'll see if they serious. Grab somebody else and say, neighbor, I'm going to play a game with you. I'm going to say a certain phrase and I'm going to watch how deep you think you are. Tell them when I got close to you tonight, you were smelling like cologne and good high class perfume. You were fly in your appearance. But tell them for the last 10 seconds, You've been smelling fishy. Something is different about you. Because when you look up fish in the Bible, fish means wealthy. And some of y'all did not know it. But when you make chicken, you can smell it in the kitchen. When you make turkey, you can smell it in the oven. But when you make fish, you can smell it all through the whole house. And God said, tell some of you, I'm going to bless your entire family. Your entire family. Something is fishy about you. fish and we're about to go home you got to catch it you got to kill it you got to clean it then present it you got to catch it you got to kill it you have to clean it then present it the Lord told me to tell 50 screamers who will jump and scream I don't care how old you are he says by the end of the week you will catch it I'll kill it I'll clean it and I'll present it. Because you will not have enough strength to do the other three because it took you too long to catch it. That fish needs to be caught. It needs to be killed. Pastor Harris, it needs to be clean. And then you present it. Ain't nothing worse than smelly, bad, unclean fish. Now, Tamahashondo, if you're near somebody that's happy, be glad that you're near them because I'm about to blow your mind about them. Yes, sir. 
the reason why the fish, the wealth, was attracted and came towards Peter, I'm going to see a five-fold screen, is because of who he had on his boat. Peter's going to profit from it, but he has to testify that if it had not been for the law. Some of you are not going to scream for your neighbor, but God said, if the person you're near is a worshiper, I'm going to give you a double because I like them and I respect you. God is exchanging the problem of lack for the concern of too much. There will be no lack this year. I'm going to speak it again till your mouths talk better than your hands. There shall be no lack this year. Two, be careful who you let ride on your ship. If their presence is not profitable, tell them walk the plank. Look at your neighbor, be nice, be business, and tell them I need your presence to be profitable. Because where there's two or three, I thought I had Bible lovers gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing. God said, there am I. You want to find me? I'm always located where there's agreement. Some of you didn't get what you deserve because you were with who God didn't design. I want you to hold someone's hand. My circle is smaller than this. I have three levels of fellowship. I have one, the community. Two my company, and three, my circle. And each one gets smaller. Y'all got to stop letting company in the circle and letting the community in your company. That circle has to be filled with people that's not jealous of you, that want you to achieve beyond your wildest dreams, and are not jealous when you tell them, I bought two Bentleys in one day. You don't need no What you need two for? I heard Apostle Allen, Dr. Mixon, they all said it. They said, because I want it. God, there he goes. All right, I'm closing. God, God wants to blow our minds. He's tired of being a God that's stuck in pages. There he goes, he's talking to me. I know y'all, you who've seen me for years, you can tell, but you that haven't, you're probably wondering, and I'm trying to keep my eyes closed so I can come down, but I got to tell this quick story, and I need uh, Bishop Pleasant to jump for me when I tell it. I need my nephew, J.J. Jones, back there to jump for me one time, and that's this. There was a story about a young boy who had a lamp that housed a genie. See, that's why I didn't call for the rest of you. It was called Aladdin's Lamp. And I hear some of you, he's talking about demon spirits and genies. There are no genies in the Bible, but this is a story. And the Lord showed it to me while I was standing here. He said, if that boy did not dust off that dirty lamp, the power that resonated in it would have never surfaced. And the Lord said, if some of you can just get your dusty Bible back out and just start flipping the pages, the God in the Bible will come out and say, young master, your wish is my command. You got to get them out the book. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Y'all thought that one Bible. And a light. You're holding the hand of a super duper millionaire right now. 
If they hold your hand lazy, there goes your problem. And it's been your problem. I don't let lousy and lazy come into my company at all. I told you, you have to go fishing with expectation. Let me do this quickly. Sir, in the blue clerical collar, do you pastor? Can you tell me what street your church is on? Santa Rosa, how long have you been pastoring? Two years. I want to say something to you. You don't have to understand it now. 50 of us are going to scream for you. God said, because you stood there and actually ate the message, like you went through your premeditation, let me hear them, and then you settled in, and I respect that, and you began to digest the text. God says, tell him, I can't give him a lot of fish over there because ain't none. Tell him I'm going to relocate his building and I'm going to show him who I am. Uh -oh. Ain't no fish over in Santa Rosa to catch. We never fish where fish are not biting. What's your name? How long you been here? A member of the church. 10 years, so you and I have met. Did we talk ever, go out anywhere? No. Uh, how old are you now? 28. Man, you look young. You got a driver's license? If I told you that when you were holding the camera up that I saw your new car and pee on your phone, would you believe me? <laughs> what are you driving right now? Chrysler 200, 2016, seven-year car. You grateful for it? All right, well, then this is what we're going to do. You're going to think I'm a false prophet. We're going to let you drive that a little longer, and we're going to let you buy your wife a new car. All right, it just got quiet again. I can't see well at all, but sister in the white, and you've got a scarf around your neck, wave at me. You can stand right there. Above your head says $3.5 million. And there are 35 plane tickets. Now, I don't know whether you fly. Do you fly? S excuse me? I didn't hear him. Oh, that's the same person that we said 12 tickets? Now you're getting 35 tickets? If I were you. Because if not, if you're excited, I'm going to give it. Because I ain't got time tonight. Because that posture was not one of expectation. I'll wait as long as the numbers are going higher. If God's about to give me a woman, but he changed his mind for a better one, I wait for that. Good things come. So I'm just going to say ditto. You're about to get millions, 3.2 million. But while I'm focusing to the person with the multicolor, yeah, don't, yeah, you, you're the only person. Have you gone to college? And how old are you now? If I told you that God was about to cause you to get a job in the business that was going to repay for your education, would you believe me? You say yes, it's about to happen overnight because God's about to bless you real quick. Are y'all happy for her? Let her out, let her out, baby, let her out. Fish need to swim. Let her out. Oh yeah, she gonna get it. She gonna get it. She definitely gonna get it. 
Hold on. She cried. She said, I've been telling God all this time, Lord, I want to go back to school. And he gave you a business. She said, I was faithful to my business, but I wanted to give up. That means washing her net, huh? Yeah. She said she ain't just said her sister just got her doctorate. And when she watched her walk across the stage, she said, God, I want that. And you shall have it. Sure will. Hold hands with your kind neighbor. Y'all got to get, get me some people who ready to work. Even if it's y'all coming out of preaching retirement. We don't train on the job. Young lady, um, young lady with the white hat on, wave at me. What is your name? Talk loud. Juliana, you will not believe this. God says, tell her, I'm about to reverse only the past eight years. Tell her, the past few years have been so, I don't even have a word for it. I don't even see how you're in your right mind. I don't even see how you trust anybody. I don't even see how you came to church feeling like God let you down. But God said, tell her in 72 hours, I'm going to start rebuilding her life from the ground up. And someone with a loud mouth, you better use it to the glory of God. Sir, on the lead guitar, stand. Take your guitar off your shoulders and lift your hands for a little while in a reverence position. I have to ask you two questions. Look at me, if you will, sir, and I need the answer. I hear somebody over here saying, well, if God is speaking, why you got to ask some questions? He asked Adam, where art thou, didn't he? All right, that simply means mind your business. Especially to the one who couldn't find their keys earlier today. All right. All right. Was that God speaking loud enough? I think so. I want to say something to you. Are you retired? You are. Still married? Beautiful wife? The Lord said, while you were sitting, said, tell him, I'm going to cause the government in the state to give him all his money. Uh-oh. The Lord said, they tried to sham you out of something with a clause. But God said, I'm about to rewrite the whole thing, and I'm going to give him 100% of what belongs to him. And tell him, any person with his last name on them shall be saved this year in the house of God, sir. I don't want to know your address. I don't want to know anything personal. How long have you been living where you're living? 14 years. I want to ask you a personal question, but not impersonal. Do you like it? It's up to you. All right. Well, being that, does your wife like it? Did she tell you that she don't ever want to move? No. Where the wife? Let me get the truth out of here. You like where you live. Do you want to stay there? Yep, they married. Do y'all have children? How many? How old is the eldest? 
Where is he? Ubering. If I told you that the reason why I asked him was God told me to tell him that if y'all, him, if he praised him tonight, not playing, but with his mouth, that God was going to send an angel to the eldest child, clean him fully up, give him your house, and give y'all a new one. I don't know how that's Are y'all helping them or y'all just? All I'll say is such a beautiful couple. A sight for sore eyes. Tonight, an angel will massage your back, your legs, your nerves. The Lord said, I will alleviate unnecessary pain. You and this woman are getting added years onto your lives. We're not jealous. I said, we're not jealous upstairs. Last time, hold your neighbor's hand on tomorrow. I'm going to be throwing prophecies to the balcony. Y'all better not be running up there. It's okay to have fun in church. I said it's okay to have a good time in church. Young man with the glasses with the white hat on. Speak loud. What's your name? How old are you? I want to say something to you. And who is that saying? Say it. And who are you to him? Okay, let's try this again. That's why I was going to wait till Monday, but y'all got me. What you, what you say? Okay. So non-related, but you care about him enough that you want him blessed. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to reverse the entire prophecy. How old are you? All right, I'm going to reverse it because he was a little comedian. He'll still get blessed. God's going to bless him. But the Lord said, when you spoke out loud holding the child, God said, I'm giving her a three-bedroom condo. The Lord said, I'm about to bless her. God said, y'all been searching and searching and couldn't find what was right. But God said, whoop, he just found it. Y'all ain't, and somebody ought to shout yes from the main floor. Hold on, wait a minute. So you know her? That's my wife. That's who? That's my wife. I can't find it, but in here, I told my Hold on. Hold on. He just showed me a text. He said, This is blowing my mind. Now he a prophet. He got an unusual gift, and I've seen him. But prophets rarely get prophesied to. And I'm moved by it. He's an accurate prophet. I didn't know there was his wife. I couldn't see nobody up there. I can't see nobody up there. I got to call colors and things. But he just showed me a text. And the text said that he hit his real estate agent and said, please find me a three-bedroom condo. Y'all ain't talking. 
The real team find it. God did. Yeah. God did. God did. Y'all going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to give y'all 60 seconds to dance real quick. And I mean 60 seconds. go. I don't want anyone dancing out of being bullied. If you feel like you don't want to dance for the Lord, don't. You're not going to hell. But the only people I want dancing now are those who see a 48-hour turnaround. If you know God's going to turn it around, you've got 30 seconds to praise Him right where you are. Praise Him, Bishop Kearney. Praise him, Dr. Lady O. Go ahead and praise him. And let him praise him. real. That's absolutely real.
Ghost is here. Thank you, Jesus. Hold someone's hand, please. Bow your heads. I would, and I guess I'm using the biblical term for beg, I beseech all of you to be with me tomorrow night. I feel that what I have to say you can bring this down now. I feel that what I have to say will be followed by signs. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Some of you are going to see proof of your praise by tomorrow. Because you praised him with expectation. Hallelujah. Hiya. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you have to renew your love for God. You're going to be the walking dead. You're going to be just existing through life. Because you won't give God his spot back. It's all right to give people pieces of you, but give God all of you. He's my life, my joy, my all. Hold that neighbor's hand. Don't let the hand of a wealthy person go so easy. 
I've been in the company of wealth for the past year. And now that wealth is trying to visit my church. They're not tongue speakers. Some of them don't have the Holy Ghost, but they have a desire to hear the yes, word sir. of God. Yes, and if they keep hearing the word of God, they will become a candidate for baptism yes, sir. Yes, sir. in water and of the spirit. Yes, they will one day find out there's another language that transcends Spanish and French. I don't hear nobody. They will find out that heaven has a language. And I speak in that language. As your eyes are closed and heads are bowed, I am urged by God, but I knew that when I was coming because I took it out when I was on the plane. I couldn't study on the plane. He wasn't speaking to me. He said, sleep. Because I was exhausted. He said, Todd, sleep. Got to my room. Took about 15 minutes to get ready to come back. He said, now I want to talk to you. He said, but you need to start telling people everywhere I will allow you to go. That I have to become priority again. Yes, sir. I didn't hear your voice. God has to. I thought I hear some pastors saying to me, but... God has to become priority again. Our children need to see what we saw growing up and that is a strong faith walk. Not panic, not pressure, not sickness, a strong display of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Your head's bowed. Now, Bishop, I want you to stand down there as I always do. This is not for everyone at all, but this is for 24 of us. The Lord said, anyone that owns a business, has an idea for a business, or you're in the business of ministry and you need it to flourish, tonight, without fear, we're going to sow 200 of our dollars. I am. The rest of you can do whatever you want to do. But the Lord said, these people that come and not worry, and they stop thinking about what they call a heaven, he said, I will make their lives extremely profitable. Even you that are online watching, do the same. We're not going to make you do it, but you that freely give it and don't wash your nets, God said, I'll make sure that there's a hole in your net, which means your salary won't be the reason why you succeed. God wants to break your net and show you. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. These wonderful doorkeepers and ushers, first responders, whatever we call them in the 21st century. They are coming in your direction. Please, nobody give it yet. I want us, I want the 20, some people to give it together. Because God says, I'm going to reward you collectively. If you own a business and you miss this, then you really don't own a business. A business own you. Anybody that's a business owner that can't give your God who gave you the idea $200, you a hustler. One bundle of weave almost costs $200. And some of you got about two grand in your hair and about six on your purse. That's the truth. God is my priority, Bishop. I now dress like white people. I just put something on and go outside. I decided to stop having the black thing, dressing up what ain't there. It's time for you to understand that what you make happen for others, Mike Murdoch said, God will make happen for you. Now the 20 some people that's going to get it stand in this aisle right here. I don't care who's first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Just stand in one line, please. Look at God. This is so real that y'all going to call Bishop Allen and ask him to bring me back for a whole different type of service. Because now you're going to need to know what to do with what you have. Bible said after she got the oil, she came back and said, now what do I do with it? And he now told her, sell it. Sell it. So you're going to need teaching in your new strategy for kingdom wealth. Somebody shout yes. yes. 
waiting on four more people and I don't want to wait 40 seconds for you because you should know God is already speaking. And to the woman in the back without saying it, you would have gotten a lot of money, but you said if he prophesied, I give it to him. My prophecy is worth way more than your $200. Especially when you the one waiting on the settlement that you supposed to lose. See? Because you lied on that paper. You're not injured. You see? That's how clear God speaks. But he won't embarrass you. He won't say your color, your name, what row. Because we only prophesy the good things. But when you think God does not know what's going on. I want to say it like my great grandmother said it. You can't beat God's given. Come on, talk to me. No matter how. Stop holding back, waiting on God to give you something first. Then you give him part of what he gave you. Give him your seed. He'll give you his fruit. Amen. When you all come, I want you, hear me, all of you that's in the line. I want you to realistically tell God how many millions you need for your vision. Look at me. I'm going to tell you one more time. Do not get greedy in this moment. God said, tell me how much you will need to do it and to live. Say it out your mouth, not loud when you sow. And God says, I'm going to release my kingdom to go do that bidding. Some people say 100 million. I, I don't even need 100 million, but I would take it, but I don't need no 100 million to live. Some people do. They got a vision that's that big. I don't. I don't want to own a jet. I don't want no private pilot. That ain't the time I'm on. I'll use my son jet. You pay for it and let me use it. See how he said? So all of you that want it, let me use it. But I'm not, I like giving in to other people. That's what I do. That's my job. I like giving in to other people. Everybody that knows me know I'm not lying. I like helping other people's dreams come true. And I go to bed feeling good doing that at night. Amen? Somebody over here, I was going to give you a prophecy, but you just came to hear, could I preach? Man, you got to come knowing that the world doesn't need another preacher. We need somebody with a real testimony. When you come, realistically, do not say 100,000. I said seven figures. So if you can live off a million, fine, but that's the bare minimum you all are going to ask for. We're going to clap loud for 30 seconds while you do it. Let's go. Let's start. So... Come on, speak it. Y'all not clapping. I know why you're clapping so often, because you want to hear how much they want. Y'all clap them hands. Say the amount. You're not going to call me a false prophet if you don't follow instructions. Say the amount. <laughs> On tomorrow, I will challenge others to give. What I want from everyone is to get at least a $40 offering in your hand. Now, that's very low for my service, but I want everyone to do it besides the everyone. If you cannot see, Lord, I see some more people who should have done it. One person would have gotten out of their court case. That's a shame. You people take God too simple. I'm not going to tell you who you are, but you're going to serve about 21 days. I don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Somebody shout glory. glory. I need everyone to get a $40 offering. I ain't going to jail for nobody. I ain't saying I ain't going, but Lord, don't ever let me go. I'm not cut out for jail. I'll be fighting every day. Sleeping with my eyes wide open. It just ain't cut out for me. Did 
did I mention the name Holmes? Anytime today? James? I think I did, didn't I? Homer? But who's Holmes? But I just, I, 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 where is Erica? She not here either? She just left? Does she, and how old is she? Maybe. Does she have her own car and license? Call her and tell her, stop the car, dance 10 seconds, and get ready to get another one. Call her. Tell her, don't come back. Just tell her, pull the car over. She listened. Tell her, pull the car over. Get out and dance wherever she's at just for 10 seconds or more. I wish somebody would give me these easy prophecies. I pull that car over on the highway. Hazards on and show you what's going on. It'll be on the news. There is a strange man dancing on. Oh, she gone. I need the majority of you to sow $40 in this first day. Tomorrow, I must challenge five of you. I won't say with what. But I need you to give because it's going to be fruit to your own account. God has blessed some of us, and I'm one of them where I will. I'm not in the posture to have to beg for money. That's because I gave money when I was begging. When I was living the life of a beggar, but you couldn't tell because I was wearing the Versace and the Brioni and the Fendi and driving a nice car, but killing myself to pay for it, robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I always gave. And now giving has created me a lifestyle where I can say thank you, God, for all that you've done. Amen? And you're going to have that same opportunity, right? I can't hear you. I said, Correct. You want the same opportunity to be able to pay for the bill and eat and leave the tip the same amount as the bill. I do that in a lot of places. That's why I don't have to make reservations, y'all, because your gifts will make room for you. Amen. And Dr. Sherman Allen ain't never been a cheap man. He ain't never been a man that holds back. He's always treated people well. Hello. What's your name? Tori what? Aldridge, spell it A L D R I D G E. Yes. Uh, don't think I'm being nosy. Have you ever been married before? Where is he? See? You hearing the way I'm talking? See? I like that you told the Holy Ghost in me the absolute truth, even though in your spirit you're already gone. I get it. The Lord said, because you came up and gave, what, what did you give? See, because you gave from the delay, God says, tell her, I'm not going to even wait and tell her. Tell her next is already around the corner. Tell her I can't even wait. Some of y'all jealous, but that's okay. God said, this is the one I've been holding for 11 years. See, I'll go down to the years, the day, the month. I have no problem because I want people to know God is real. I need everyone to sow 40 or more if you know God's blessed you. Come now and let's sow that into the kingdom. I need to see good rapport, good results. We're all bringing 40. Even if you're giving on your phone, walk. So people can see that you are an obedient child of God. Sometimes your faith walk ignites someone else's faith. Walk. Don't get used to sitting down zelling because of a phone. The Bible said and they brought their gifts. That's right. Yes, sir. And you can go on the right or the left for a credit card or for your electronic transactions. 
I need everyone. When I say everyone, if you're a grown person and you got a bank account and you stayed in, got all this word and blessings and won't sow, something's wrong. For God so loved the world, he gave. That was his first display of love upon the world was giving his only. I do that. I'm teaching my church for three months on Jesus and giving. Three months straight. They'll hear nothing but Jesus and why we give. Who he is and why we give. I don't want nobody giving out of fear or being bullied. I want you to understand what the giving process does. I'm happy for Sister Aldridge. I know y'all not, but I am. I am. I am. Hello, hello. Do do you have a job? You own your own business. So you say you're an entrepreneur. I want to say something to you. If I told you that when you came up here that God says, tell her she needs to come up with a new plan so she can make this money while sitting at home. There is something in you that God has been trying to get to you for over four years. He's trying to break through your creativity and get you to do it the way he wants you to do it. Because his way would have already turned the money four or five times. I know you know a little bit of what I'm talking about. I'm going to lay hands on you. Your mind's going to open up in seven days. You're going to become almost, almost like a genius. You're going to be like, it was this simple. I missed it. Hold on. Who, who's, who's a hair, hairstylist? Who? Please talk to me. You licensed? Okay, I need you to slowly run to the hallway because you're getting three hair salons. And one is a day, day spa. It's a very unique plan. And God's going to send some rich person to give you the money with no strings attached. They're not going to want what the other person wanted. I'm sorry. Point your hands this way to this wonderful entrepreneur. What business are you in? I feel like Steve Harvey now. But you don't do hair, do you? No, I'm an esthetician. Do you go to this church? No, I just opened it the other day, like you, Thursday. You just opened it Thursday? Mm -hmm. Where's my hair, hair girl at? No, the one I just prayed for. She's still running. Come here. I want you to meet somebody. Are you working in a salon? Are you doing okay there? No? This lady just opened one on Thursday. Hold on. It came fully furnished and ain't nobody in there. But me. And she don't do hair. No, I don't. <laughs> She's an esthetician. <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> and you're up here for what reason? So you're a licensed hairstylist too and you don't want to lose out? 20 something years. How many chairs in there? Five. No more. Uh-uh. We're going to let her hire the others and consider the two. Y'all need to go to lunch. You need to go see it. I just told you after I preached it that the signs would follow. See, y'all, it happened right on the premises. I think this is a match made in heaven. I'm not even, what you say? I do too. You do too. 
Hold on. What? I said I was scared to open it because I didn't want to fail because I had my salon before and it was hard. So when I opened it this time, I was like, Lord, I don't want to fail. And I was so scared. And it's crazy because I was just sitting back there and I was like, well, maybe I just need to turn back in the keys because I'm scared because I don't want to fail at all. And I just told God I was going to do that. And what's so crazy is... And they were washing their nets. <laughs> and the Lord had told me when I was sitting back there that tomorrow to go in and pray over every seat that's in the salon. And I said I was going to do just that. And you just said this. And I'm like, okay, Lord. All right, I tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to touch y'all. What I'm going to let y'all do, especially you and her, I'm going to let y'all hug and watch God do the rest. Do it now. I don't hear anybody through here. Y'all don't believe in miracles on the premises? I do. She's got a place that's empty. Let me get out of here. Everyone standing. The rest of you bring your best offering, whatever amount it is. If you didn't give it all and you could have, you are your own worst enemy. Did you see what happened to Sister Aldridge? Did you see what happened to this lady? Your miracle might be in your row. But because you're holding back, God holds back. Come quickly and sow into the kingdom, whatever amount you can. Be fair with the Lord. Be fair with his servant. Be fair with his work. Don't walk slow as if you need a prophecy. Y'all come on and go back to y'all seat. We got one more night. With me, at least. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Young lady. Hello, come here. How old are you? How did you get here? Who's her mother? Call out your mother's name. No, no, you stay there. Tell me her name. No, talk to me. Nicole what? Thurman? Um, if I told you that when you go to your mama, first of all, who gave you that offering? Your mom. And she sent you up here and you getting a prophecy, third party for her. You may not like this, but I'm going to tell you two things and one thing you'll work out later. God says, you're going to go to school, but it's going to be a different kind of school. And the way you're going to get there is through your legs. Does she run? Atop! And this ain't the $200 prophecies. This, we, we don't prophesy for your money. Do you play sports? Do you run? What do you do? You run, see? You're going to run your way all the way to college. You're going to run your way all the way to the Junior Olympics. If God delay his coming, and God said, because your mother gave you the money, y'all may have to move because you're going to need another school. Y'all ain't talking. And somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Let's give and let's go home. I wanted to be in bed at 1030. I really did. I really did. Thank you. Uh -huh. And who baby is that? Whose baby is that? Stand up. Is that your baby or your grandbaby? Talk to me. Grandbaby. Where's the child's father? I'm asking you. Because when she gave her money, I heard gates open. And the Lord says, you don't have to worry about your grandbaby because I'm only opening the gate so the money gets where it belongs. Yeah. 
at your feet. You may not believe this. I don't know you, but God said, tell her I'm going to give her power over drugs, crack, cocaine, marijuana. God said, tell her I'm going to make sure no drug addicts is in her family from this day forward for the rest of her. And y'all are mighty quiet up in Zion. And God says, whatever you ask. The reason why I cannot prophesy to you because God says you and him have talked on a regular basis. He says she walks through the house talking to me. Sometimes she ain't even in English. He likes when you go through this kind of yell thing. Yay! Something like a yell. And the Lord, oh, you said yeah too. The Lord said, tell her whatever she wants, whenever she needs it, just ask. God said, for the next year and a half, he's putting the gift of healing in your hands. Uh-oh. Oh, hey, that's what I like. I like a mahalia. Y'all jealous or y'all okay? Hey! And I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Hey, hey. See, some of you think God only use you because of your title. You got to have a passion for people, not your ministry. For people. Tomorrow night, hopefully there'll be no room in this place. I receive it. I receive it. I want to say something to you, not out of fear, but out of respect. You and your wife's youngest child, this child has something wrong with the breathing. The child is seeing things that y'all can't see. This child, like, is living in their own world because there's something that can never be traced because it's too young on one of the heart valves behind the heart muscle. So an angel massages this child every day and this child goes into like a laugh and looks off. The child ain't here. And the Lord says, the reason why, hallelujah, Y'all forgive me. God said, the reason why I'm letting this child live, it would be this child that keeps this marriage together. If the marriage ends, the child goes home. Because God said, I gave you this child. God said, I couldn't find any other way to make them do it right, so I had to threaten what they loved the most. The time of birthing new things are over. Raise one to its full adulthood. God said, the reason why the child is even living is the child is using my heart. This child can see what neither one of you can as an infant. I didn't know any of this, but now that I'm your father, I heard it. I need to stop. Everybody stand. Mm -hmm. Y'all just worship real quick.
hey, hey, hey. Hey, woo. We in something serious, y'all. Yeah, we in something real serious. What the, hallelujah. Hiya. need you all that can take a break be here in the morning yes, sir. to experience the ministry testimony and power of Dr. Sonia Mixon tomorrow night if you would come dine with I and the Holy Ghost Woo, this is a deep thing while the apostles about to come I need you to obey me support both services but obey me on this command I want you to hug someone near you, whether you know them or not, longer than 10 seconds because you're breaking something off of them. Do it now as he's coming. Come on, lift your hands and worship. Lift your hands and worship. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Come on, lift your hands. Open your mouth. Worship, worship, worship. Come on, come on. Presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight. We bless you and praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we share neha asha. Man sheka si andala mama hashe idana. Come on, lift your hands. Worship just a moment. Come on. We're going home. Hallelujah. Hashi na na mahasya. Hallelujah. Hear the Hashem the old sea. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this to you. We're going home. 29 years ago when the Lord spoke to us and said to host the prophetic summit. There were no prophetic meetings in this region. Hallelujah. When God told us to do it, he told us to do it. Because there is a need for the voice of the prophet to break things off of the lives of the people of God. I heard Bishop Varan ask say years ago at the prophetic summit that whenever a prophet shows up, he comes with a birth certificate in one hand and a death certificate in the other. He comes to release what God has purposed to birth in your life, but he comes to pronounce death on what the enemy has sought to use to kill it. Lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. I say that to you because I need you to understand. 
This meeting is necessary so that you can hear the voice of the prophets. There's no other meeting like this in this region. Somebody say it's necessary. We invest large amounts of money to do it because it's necessary. And I want to encourage you, this year the Lord said to go back to the day and night services. Tomorrow morning at 12 noon, tomorrow at noon, Pastor Sonia Mixon will be ministering the word of the Lord. There's a heavy healing anointing on her life because God has healed her, delivered her from cancer. Many of us walked through and watched her journey as God brought her through. She's preached here before. The Lord told me to have her come. I want to encourage you to be here at 12 noon. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night, Bishop Todd Hall will be ministering again. There should not be a seat in this place. You've seen how God has moved. Hallelujah. You need to come. You need to come. Hallelujah. Each of these services, I promise, will be a blessing from the Lord. Don't you miss it. Lift your hands. Stand. We're going home. Hallelujah. 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 Father, for your presence, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word that's gone forth. Thank you for miracles, signs and wonders. Now, God, we pray that you would strengthen uh, the body and soul and spirit of Bishop Todd Hall. Give him rest tonight. They shall know my car see. Renew him, refresh him, revive him. Hallelujah. Because of what he has put out. Hallelujah. I pray that you would give him sweet rest. Hallelujah. Bless us. Even as we rise in the morning and bring us into your house. With a sense of expectation. Put an urgency in our spirit. We need to hear from you. Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, I need to hear from you. Speak to me. I'm shy. Speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. Have your way now. Keep us. Go with us. Hallelujah. Go before us. That's our coming and our going. Our laying down and our rising up. The name that's above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. Thank God. And amen. We are dismissed. Let me remind you that there are vendors in the... Thank you for watching our online stream. Be sure to join us Sundays at 10 a.m. as well as Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Don't forget to like and share the video with your friends and family as we continue to spread the gospel around the world. Sow your seed today via any one of our convenient online methods. Until we meet again, go now in the favor of God, knowing that the favor of God has already gone before you.